Handheld emulators are confusing and plentiful, so let's break down one of the most interesting handheld emulators in 2024, which is still the MiU Mini. There's tons of good things about this device and tons of new software are out for it, so let's dive into this one and see why it's still worth picking up in 2024. <laughs> And before we dive into this tiny powerhouse, at the end of September, we're going to be giving a Pow Kitty RGB 20 SX away. All you have to do to win is be subscribed, and then we pick one. Back to the video. Since this thing's launch, it's been a fantastic little console, and it's only gotten better with time because now we have SirWish OS. It's basically kind of Onion OS. Um, how it works and everything, but this is still a fantastic form factor and size if you can get your hands on one of these. So in 2024, this really does still fill a niche, but there are a few things you can even do with the hardware now. So let's look at the hardware, see if anything has changed, and see why my buttons are different. So looking at the hardware here, this is a very small console, and here it is compared to the Ambernic offers and the other MiU Mini Plus. So this console we're looking at here today has been out for a while and it features a 2.8 inch IPS screen with a 750 by 560 resolution which is pretty high so games look very sharp a 2000 milliamp hour battery a d-pad that is squishy and not clicky a b x y buttons that are also squishy and not clicky which we've changed out for the new buttons that we have here and I'll explain that in a little bit start and select buttons that are clicky and not squishy in addition to a menu button right under the screen in the center that is clicky and not squishy on the right hand side of the device we have nothing on the left hand side of the device we have a volume pot which when scrolled up and down changes the volume on the bottom of the device we have a headphone jack an sd card reader and a usb-c port on the top of the device we have a power button that is clicky and not squishy in addition to three led lights that are indicators on the back we have a battery compartment that opens which is fantastic in case we need to replace the battery and on the back we have very tiny trigger buttons but they were able to fit in an r1 r2 l2 and l1 which are just barely clicky but not squishy this is a very well put together device and they are on the revision four of it and it shows now let me tell you where i found these fancy buttons and this is how we change the buttons these buttons are from litnxt.com and I personally don't like the colored buttons. The all black buttons with the blue shell I think looks fantastic. I know they're reminiscent of other game consoles but I think this looks much better to me. And if you want any other colors just feel free to go to litnxt.com who sent this over to me to review the new software and uh, see if you want buttons made of your own. I think these are very nice. And talking a little more about that software, let's go into that now and see what the big difference in all the software is and how it works now because it's very similar to all the handhelds coming out now but in a tiny package. And this is the fourth iteration of the MiU Mini. The one I have here from litnxt.com is running Onion OS. And it's really fixed a lot of the problems that this had in the past. The power on, power off button works perfectly. If you put it to sleep and it stays there for a while, it'll actually put the console into low power mode or turn it off. And you can change all of those options in the settings, which is really nice to save power if you, in case you put it in your pocket and leave it on. The menu button now is a game switcher between all of the games that you've been recently playing. You can hop right back into there. Or when you turn the device back on, you can just hop right into the last game you were playing, which I think is really nice because I think this console is made to be played just quickly and then thrown back in your pocket. This is still a Linux based operating system here. So everything is laid out nicely in an order by console so you can easily pick what you want to play. Everything from the 8 and 16 bit eras plays fantastic on this device if you don't need a joystick, all the way up to the Game Boy Color era. The SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color all run very well on this device, and with this size screen, it is perfectly fine. We can also run Pico 8 and PlayStation games on this device, which all of those still run very well with this operating system. We have ports available on this device, in addition to Game Boy Advance emulation that runs very well, all the way up to the Nintendo DS. I think this is a great addition to the device because you're able to run drastic and you're able to speed up and slow down the emulation if you'd like to. This is kind of where the power tops out on in this device though 
and honestly I think this is kind of the max I would like to play on this device as well. Anything more and you're going to want to have joysticks on board to play more 3D intensive titles. This device has been out for a while now and I think they've finally polished all of the weird little quirks it had when it was coming out and first initially launched. This is now a full featured device that you can customize to your heart's content. Having these different teams update the software really makes this thing feel and work like a proper first party handheld something that you'd pick up from like nintendo and just click go into playing and then be able to click it put it back in your pocket and have no issues with and a lot of these handhelds don't start that way so a lot of them have issues with software and the modding community has actually helped with that so and it's the same case here so if you're interested in picking up this software with this device, the sponsor down in the comment section below is where to grab it. But I did mention that there are a ton of these different handhelds out, and I mean, this market since the MiU Mini has come out has gotten very crowded. So there's a bunch of different things that go into this hardware and software category now, and you even have things from MiU themselves, the MiU Mini Plus, like this, and the Ambernic lineup, which has a million different options in it. And even stuff from Pal Kitty now that fill this little niche. I think this meets that portability size, but if you're looking for something a little bit larger, there are tons of other options. If you haven't seen it yet, check out our roundup for all of the vertical handhelds for this year. I think there's a bunch of good ones in there, and funny enough, this one didn't even make it for me, personally. I think it's a size issue for me because I got big hands, I can palm a basketball. But for me, if this is something that you're just throwing in your bag or even using it as like a Tamagotchi keychain, this does really get a lot done. So if you're looking for something else in this category, maybe take a look at this video. Or if you're looking in something else in this category, take a look at this video. All of them are handheld emulators and we do a ton of this stuff on this channel. So subscribe if you'd like to be considered for the giveaway. And I will see you next time because there's always more hardware to review. That's all I got. Davey out.